Hi, I'm Tim Kelly from MongoDB, and in this tutorial we're going to learn how to secure our RESTful APIs. We're going to build a simple CRUD app using Spring Data MongoDB, we're going to secure this using Microsoft's Entra ID, and then we're going to host all this on Azure using Azure Spring Apps. For this tutorial, there's a couple prerequisites. You're going to need a MongoDB account with a cluster setup, you're going to need an Azure subscription, you're going to need a Java development kit version 17 or higher, you're going to need Apache Maven version 3.8.6 or higher, you're going to need a Spring Boot application, you can create a Maven project for this using Spring Initializer. The dependencies you'll need will be Spring Web, a Watt 2 resource server, Azure Active Directory, and select Java version 17 or higher to generate the jar. If you're following along with this tutorial directly, you can just clone the repository that I've linked in the description below. Now, to get started with the tutorial, I have provided a demo application. It's linked below, you can clone the GitHub, but it's just a basic to-do crud app and it uses Spring Data MongoDB and the Mongo repository to get started. So if we look in our repository, we extend Mongo repository. This allows us to use our creates, our deletes, our updates with our MongoDB database without too much overhead. And then if you look in our controller, you'll see we have some annotations here just for interacting with our Entra ID. So we're using Microsoft Entra ID to secure our application. We're going to be issuing keys just to manage which users can actually access the application. And when we're interacting with it later in Swagger, once we have everything uploaded, you'll see how we give this key and how we authenticate the users. So for our basic that we're leaving unlocked just for demo purposes, and then for our creating and for updating, we have a role user that we're going to create later. And this user will be able to create an update. And then we'll also have an admin which is the only person who's able to delete. So when we're managing our roles and our users in our Microsoft Entra ID, we're able to control who has access to which endpoints. As well as this, I also have cores disabled. For a demo application, this is fine. If you're actually creating an enterprise application, something that you're expecting to go to production, I'd expect you to manage who can access this a little bit more scarcely than I've done here. As well as this, there's some other things going on, such as in OpenAPI config, there's one thing you're going to need to take note of here. So I have my app name as Tim's to do. When you're launching your Spring application later on in the demo, you're going to be naming your app. And this is what we have here. So I have mine called Tim's to do. Whatever you name your application, you're going to have to edit here. It's just so you can access it. And we're going to need to keep that consistent. Everything else going on in here, you shouldn't need to mess with. Web config, everything should be fine. And there's going to be some application properties we need to add. So we'll get started with that next. So you'll see here in our application properties, there's a couple things going on. First of all, we just have the name of our application, which is to do basic there, don't need to do anything there. And next there is a couple of profile tenants and credentials IDs that we need to get later on when we're creating our Microsoft application in the Azure portal. As well as this, there is some configuration around Spring Security. Now. A lot of this you don't need to change for a large part, but you are going to need to add your tenant ID, which we'll get later, and your application URL, which again, we will get later. After that, you also need to pay attention to the end here where we have our Spring Data MongoDB. This is where we're just gonna add our connection string and our database name. Other than that, I'm gonna show you where to get all of this, but we should be ready to go. Now, the first step will be to get your connection string. If you already have your own cluster set up with data you wanna use, you can just use that. But for this, I'm just gonna create a fresh project. So we can call this one secure Azure and we'll create that. We're going to add ourselves as the project owner and then we'll create the project. So this will take a moment to spin up, but what we're going to do is once everything here is loaded and we have our free tier M0 cluster set up, we'll be able to get our connection string to connect. So again, we can take the default here for this one because it's only a demo. I'm going to choose the M0, which is our free forever tier and we're going to create deployment. Now that this is spun up, we're going to create our database user. I'm going to copy the password and we can create this here. And we're going to choose our connection method. For us, we're going to choose our driver. Now this actually, we don't need to go too far into, but once this loads up, we can just copy the string as it presents there. And we're going to add this to our application properties. So now that we're back in our application properties, we're going to add a string here. This string won't work for you by the time this video goes out, so make sure to create your own. But then after this, we're also going to create our database name. And for this, we can just call it secure. 
Perfect. So we have everything we need from our MongoDB side. So now that we have our application ready, it's time to expose our RESTful API in Microsoft Entry ID. So to do this, we need to register a new application with Microsoft Entry ID, formerly known as Azure Active Directory. So to do this, we're going to go up to the top and we're going to search Microsoft Entry ID. And you'll see it here. So along the left-hand side here, what we need to do is we need to go to App Registrations and we're going to create a new registration. So this is going to be the user face and display name. This can be changed later, but for this tutorial, we're just going to stick with our CRUD example and we're going to call it something basic. So to do API and API, perfect. And then after that, we need to choose our supported account types. So for supported account types, we're going to select accounts in any organizational directory. And the reason for this is it will just allow the widest set of Microsoft entities. Now, actually what we can do is we can allow and personal Microsoft accounts because that will just allow the at Skype out Xbox. But again, once you have your application at a production level, you're going to understand the scope of who you need to allow access to in that sense. For this one, it's absolutely fine to select any of these. Lastly, what we're going to do is we're just going to register this. So this will take a moment to spin up, but once it does, we're going to pop back and we're going to go to the overview page. Okay, so now that our app has spun up, we can see here we have our application or a client ID. What we're going to do is we're going to copy this and we're going to add this to our application properties. So you can do that now or you can add it later, but this is just going to go as our Spring Cloud Azure Active Directory credential client ID. So up at the top of the application properties and we can paste it in here. Perfect, and we can save that. Okay, so now that we have our application client ID added to our application, what we're going to do is we're going to expose an API. So to do this, we're going to go to the left hand of the screen and hit expose an API, and we're going to add an application ID URI. So this is what you saw earlier in our Swagger application. So in my case, it's just called Tim's to do. Now it's important that this is a unique value. So it's a globally unique URI in the scope of your Microsoft Azure account. So to do this, I'm just going to call it Tim's to do. And I'll save that and we'll come back later once everything has configured. Now that we have our application ID URI set, it's time to actually add our roles and our scopes. So first one we're going to do is we're going to add the user. So to do this, we're going to go add scope and we'll give this a name. So for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call it to do dot user. Perfect. So with the scope name, what we're going to do is for who can consent, we're going to select admin and user. And for the display name, I'm just going to add create and edit to do data. And then for the description, what I can do is I can just say allows users to, and then same information there. Perfect. And what we can do here is state enabled. We're just going to select add scope. So while this spins up, what we're going to do is we're also going to do the same for our admin. Now for both of these, we're able to do much of the same and all of the configuration on this end is going to be the same. So instead of to do user, it's going to be to do.admin. Who can consent? It's again going to be admin and user. This is going to be the one that will also be able to delete the data. So to do this, I'm just going to say uh, delete uh, to do data. Perfect allows admin to delete to do data. Perfect. Okay. And again, state enabled. What we're going to do is we're going to add scope. Perfect. So that's been successfully updated. So after this, what we're going to do is you can either upload this to your Azure Spring apps, or you can run it locally. If you want to learn how to upload to Azure Spring Apps, what I'll do is I'll link the tutorial we have on our developer center down below. And for this, we are able to keep it going locally, but the next steps are going to be, how do we add a user that can actually access our API? So we're going to do all of this through Swagger. So if you follow the next steps, I'm going to show you how to set up that Swagger client and how to actually pass along the key that will allow us to edit and delete our data. So now it's time to add our user. So to do that, we're back in Microsoft Entry ID. We're going to go over to users. And here, we're just going to create a new user. So you see, I already have a test one set up here, but I'll take you through the process. So to do this, we're just going to select new user, create new user. We'll give it 
a name. So for this name, you can choose anything. I'm just going to choose a uh, test to do. Perfect. And after that, what I'm going to do is give it its display name. So if I choose test to do, perfect. Now there's going to be a password for this. We can just take the auto generated one and we're going to select review and create. Perfect. So everything looks good to me here. I'm just going to hit create. And then what we'll need to do is once you sign in with this user for the first time, it will be required to change its password. So don't worry about whatever the password was there. It will sort itself out. Okay, so we're finally on the home stretch. What we need to do now is we need to update just for OAuth 2 uh, configuration for the Swagger UI authorization. So to connect to Swagger, we need to refresh this setting and authorize users in the Swagger UI. To do that, we're going to have to allow access tokens via the to-do client application. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back here and we have our app registrations. And if we go to all applications here, we have our to-do client. So to do this, under manage, we're going to go to authentication and we're going to add a platform. So for this, we're going to choose single page application. And for redirected URIs, we're going to add the endpoint that we have set up earlier, followed by the authorization for our Swagger UI. So to do that, it's the API endpoint we set up earlier, so our attempts to do. And then our forward slash Swagger hyphen UI, OAuth2 hyphen redirect.html. Since I'm running everything locally, it's just going to be localhost 8080 for now, but then swallowed by our Swagger redirect. Now everything else here looks okay, but what we need to do at the end is we need to select our access tokens and ID tokens. So this is just for implicit and implicit and hybrid flows. So if we hit configure here, we'll let that set up. So once we have everything going up here, there's a couple more things we're going to need to add to our application properties. So first things first, you're going to need to add your application URL to the redirect in your application. So if I paste that in there, again, I'm running this all locally. So once you go into production or you have this hosted live, maybe as a spring app, your redirect URI will look different to that at the start. And then lastly, we just need our tenant ID. So to get that, if we go back to Azure portal, what we have is just on our overview page, we have our tenant ID that we can copy and we'll paste this in up here. Now, this is everything we need. So we're going to run the application and we're going to start playing around with our API just to make sure everything looks good. So now that our application is up and running, what we're going to do is we're going to authorize the user interacting with the Swagger and we'll show how our endpoints work. So what we're going to need to do is if we go into authorize, you'll see we need a client ID and apparently a client secret. We're going to ignore the client secret for this one. We're able to get ahead with just our client ID. So this is the client ID for our to-do client that we set up earlier. So if we go back to our test to-do, we can go into our app registrations. And if we go to all applications here, we can see our to-do client. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this client ID, bring it back and paste this here. Perfect. For our scopes, we can just select all here and we'll hit authorize. So what this will do is it will take us to a sign-in page and we're going to sign in with the user that we set up earlier. So our test to do. Perfect. Now, for me, I had already logged in with this account before, but the first time you do log in, you are going to need to change your password. So expect to be taken to a different screen there before you get back to this lovely page. What this basically means is we're authorized and we're ready to go. So if we hit close here, and what we can do is we can hit our get here and we'll just see what's in our database at the moment. So you'll see we're returning an empty body. And if we go to our post, so if you remember from earlier, our post was set up so that only users who've been given permission can actually access this endpoint. So if we go to our controller, you'll see it needs at least the scope of user. So if we go back here, what we can do is we can hit execute on this. We'll see what comes back. Perfect. Okay, we got a code 200. And yep, if we go back to our MongoDB database, what we can do is we can actually check to see if that entered. So if we hit refresh here, and perfect, we have our tester set up in our database. So there we go. You now have a secure Spring app that's been secured with Microsoft on ID. And there you have it, a fully secured RESTful API built with Spring Data MongoDB and secured with Microsoft on ID and OAuth2. 
If you want to learn more, head over to our Developer Center or our MongoDB YouTube channel where you can follow more of our tutorials. If you like this tutorial, leave a like and a comment. And if you have any questions, head over to our community forums or you can just see what other people are building with MongoDB.